it all started from the day when my father passed me his old cameras you know he got interest towards photography so he said okay you, you want to continue photography you want to take something you can have it as my presence and that's the day i started one of my cousin he was an artist the day one camera come in all the painter who do realistic picture the portrait picture everybody lost their job so based on his profession cameras are their enemies then i said okay why don't we do something new we accumulate all your enemies put it at one place and we do it in a unique way what others have not done it then he say it's on let's try and that's how all it started uh, if you take a pgn camera it took about 8 to 9 years for us to found it it is designed in such a way that a pgn can carry i love all my collection one is pearl's first button camera about 100 years back they can create such a unique thing there is a button you can put in your coat and they can control it here the button can open and take a picture for you see how clever those days the spies were if you talk about a unique piece yeah we do have a machine gun used by japanese military in the world war 2 they use this gun to train the air force people if you see there is a lens if you click you don't get bullets it will shoot you Museum of Toys. Our collection is made up of toys from more than 40 countries. The countries are like Bulgaria, even made in Singapore toys. We have no windows in this museum, and the huge facade behind is to protect from the harmful rays of the sunlight. Because our toys are all in mint or near mint condition. We showcase about more than 8,000 pieces of toys over here. This is less than 10% of the owner's collection. Uh, remaining 90% we store in warehouses. called Takyo is because the Milo tin, there's always a boy kicking a ball. So what we do is we use Australian recipe Milo, mix it with bourbon and let it sit for about two days. When people think about perfumes, they most closely associated with the big french brands but cultures that have the most links to the art of perfumery i would say are the arabic cultures and actually the indian cultures i'm actually in this trade because of my grandfather he started a perfume shop here in the 1930s a lot of what you see over here we used to just keep it in the back room you know it's a messy process Uh, but now people want to see the process more and more like an open kitchen people want to see what happens by doing it this way you actually become a part of the process and uh, you get to choose your ingredients it's not just a finished product that you're buying but you know you've inserted yourself into the process as well something fresh and clean like you know clean cotton bed linen yeah, like clean skin yes yeah. clean skin It's a bit more pepper. Bottle it up for me, please. 
I hope that people start to see perfumes as an experience rather than just as a finished product that you pick up off a shelf. Man, that looks Instagrammable. Being Instagrammable is all well and good, but the food's got to be great as well. Here we have the cauliflower furikake, which smells super enticing. I can't wait to dig in. Vegetables never tasted so good. Got the grilled portobello salad right in front of me, and I can't wait to tuck in. Here's the eggs benedict, and the eggs are the best in Singapore. Organic grade A eggs. Oh, check that out. Check this out, you've got a whole soft shell crab to yourself. No wonder it's a bestseller. There's no better combination than waffles, chicken, watermelon, and maple syrup. Nice coffee flavor, and you see the color change as you drink it. Really fun stuff. Here is the boozy sedap chendol milkshake. That kick of rum at the end. I'm a fan of this.
there are bars, and then there are cool bars by the beach. Singapore is a tropical island, and if you want to make the most out of the trip, be sure to soak up the sun and dip your toes in the sand with an ice cold beer or cocktail in your hand. I'm now at Seaside Siloso Beach Sentosa, where you'll find a collective of bars such as Sandbar, Coast, and breaking the charm and rustic beach afternoon vibe is Bikini Bar, where the legendary quarterly beach party Bikini Rocks is held. Let's check it out. Heart thumping live music, irresistible drink and food offers, fun beach games led by Bikini Babes. Bikini Bar comes complete with a pool table and an island bar. Bringing some of the best homegrown bands in Singapore, be sure to join in the fun held every quarter. You'll be forgiven for mistaking this as a Bali beach. If you're looking for something a bit more laid back and intimate by the beach, then you can't miss Coasts at Seaside, located right beside Bikini Bar. With Instagram-worthy backdrops, Coasts offers a shaded deck, beach seatings and sunbeds to the water's edge. What I'm having is the slipper lobster spaghetti and banana and chocolate pie paired with an ice-cold Cronenberg lager. Cheers! After a hearty lunch, what better way to spend your lazy evenings than to rest and relax on one of Sandbar's new and comfortable beanbag lounges? And if you're still hungry, remember to try their roasted meats, mini burgers and tasty desserts. The ultimate beach dining experience is never complete without live music spun by Sandbar's very own DJ. Glorious sunset, spectacular daily fireworks. Sometimes the best experiences come free. Seaside, the ultimate beachfront experience. Check out the website below for more. Experience the award-winning Par 72 18-hole golf course. Spanning 6,493 meters, the course features undulating fairways, varying lengths of holes, and dramatic pot bunkers that brings hours of challenges and enjoyment for golfers. Marina Bay Golf Course is one of the few golf courses in Singapore open for night golfing. So don't let the fun stop when the sun sets. Marina Bay Golf Course offers everything a discerning golfer could ask for. Who can say no to an all-day breakfast, especially when each dish is inspired by breakfast from all over the world? I'm here at Wild Honey, a breakfast place that's always buzzing with activity any time of the day. A wildly popular restaurant, Wild Honey's menu features an incredible choice of breakfast from different countries. Think Tunisian, Norwegian, Canadian, Scandinavian, and many more. It's what I call a global gastronomical adventure. If you fancy something vegetarian, there's a huge range to choose from. Today, I'm having the Flinders Lane. It comes with a crispy base topped with perfect poached eggs, grilled asparagus, sliced avocado, spicy tomato, and sesame seed and nuts for an added texture. Highly recommended for brain food lovers. And I always pair my breakfast with a cup of excellent coffee from the Common Man Coffee Roasters. Awarded the Certificate of Excellence by TripAdvisor in 2019 and voted Best Breakfast in Singapore for many years, Wild Honey has gone from breakfast to breakfast and has opened its third outlet in the sprawling South Beach Avenue. Wild Honey opens from as early as 8am but do check out each outlet's operating hours. You'll find Wild Honey at these three locations. Wild Honey Mandarin Gallery, Wild Honey Scott Square and Wild Honey South Beach. So, what do you feel like doing today? Well, we could... How about... Or... Hey, I think I found just the place. Do you want to check it out? Sure, let's go. 
313 at Somerset is super easy to get to. It's right above Somerset MRT in the middle of Orchard. Don't forget to grab a tourist card from the concierge on B1 for some sweet deals before you get started. So this place has all my favorite brands and eight floors. Start with clothes. I need some new dresses. Let's do it. Okay, I have all the clothes I need. My luggage is gonna explode. Mm -hmm, me too, but I also feel like I can squeeze in just a little bit more, right? I think we can, but can we grab a snack first? Let me guess, Garrett? <laughs> okay, time for more shopping. Hey, try the sound on this. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, oh, that is good. Oh my god, that's so cute. That is adorable. Hey, we're on holiday. We deserve some pampering. Massage time? Um, yes. Let's go. That was amazing, and I'm kind of hungry right now. So, can we go eat? Sounds good, let's go. <laughs> There's so much food at Food Republic. Prata, fried carrot cake, char kway tiao, chicken rice. I love Ya Kun Kaya Toast. The traditional Singapore breakfast is so good. A thick slab of butter and kaya and an irresistibly favorite kopi. For me, it's all about the grilled fish at Tan Yu. It smells so amazing. Now, I think we can both agree that a German beer goes down pretty well. I'm totally with you on that. I have to show you this place later. Okay. Cheers! Cheers! A bowling club in a shopping mall? Yes. K Bowling Club is an entertainment center with bowling alleys, darts machines, and a bar. You know, in all my travels, I've definitely never been to a place as cool as this. You can shop, play, dine, and even go bowling? That's crazy. You can say that again. Another game? Yes. A famous freediver once said, that scuba divers dive to look around and free divers dive to look within. And that really spoke to me. I went to Hawaii, the big island of Kona, and I tried um, just diving off of shore. All of a sudden, I could hear the humpbacks offshore. So loudly, they was reverberating in my chest. You couldn't hear them from the surface, and you wouldn't have been able to hear them if you were scuba diving. And so I thought, oh wow, this is really amazing. You get these incredible experiences. I should try this. And so that's where I started. I'm Chris. I would describe myself as being post-corporate. I used to work for a company, and um, now I'm doing things for myself. Freediving can change someone's life, um, and has changed my life. Um, it is a mind-body discipline. It opens up experiences that are not available to everybody. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the world will ever be able to experience the things that you can see and feel while you're freediving. <sighs> my hands are still tingling and my heart is still beating really fast right now. It was amazing. When I accidentally hit someone, it really felt like there was a zombie touching me. It feels so big in there. It's intense, it's scary, and it's a workout. It was insane. It was so much fun. It was awesome. I felt like I was in a zombie apocalypse myself. It really felt so real. It kind of felt like you were walking upside down. into the game, he just kept shouting. It was out of the ordinary, it was so fun.
Not much longer now, Raph. We just Please. need to grab a dress. No more glasses. shopping. And all her jacket. Um, hello? Wanna escape? Where? Somewhere awesome. Hell yeah! <laughs> all right! Yeah, Singapore has trampoline parks, but Bounce is so much more than that. Ruffy, can you do a flip? No, can you show me how? So all you need to do, one, up. Flipping is just one of the things you can learn at Flight Academy, where one of Bouncer's awesome experts teach you how to do some super cool tricks. Good, Ruffy, much better now. He's one. Play the 10 tricks on the freestyle list and get a free two-for-one voucher. It is as easy as the sit drop. Good. If you want even more of a challenge, check this out. All right. Hope you're ready to lose to a kid. You gotta get up. Get up, get up. X Park is like Ninja Warrior, but way cooler. I know I make it look really easy, but seriously, this is not for wusses. some shopping, but can we take a break for just an hour? I know this great place. They do Aussie coffee. It's just around the corner. Well, the first meal I cooked was kind of a disaster. My parents came over uh, for dinner and I decided to roast a duck, which I don't know why I did that. I had no idea what I was doing. I remember uh, Dad very sort of uh, politely saying, um, yes, it takes a certain skill to cook duck. <laughs> You know, my DNA as a chef really is so ingredient directed and often ingredients just speak for themselves. When you live in a big city like Singapore, you often can get detached from ingredients and detached from the source. As a cook, you always have to take time outside of the kitchen, outside of your usual environment. So coming here to the Kalong is always a great source of inspiration because we can really find a lot of different things that are uh, sustainable and local. Uh, that helps us to bring our own cooking to another level back at Stella.
the best cooking is really something that's very personal. Uh, it's the personal experience of exploration. It's amazing, even today we discovered new uh, flavours right here at Kalong. There's so much discovery and there's so much immediate enjoyment, I think, when you see, get the reaction uh, from people uh, to food. It reflects your personality, really. The day of the chef being the one that says, okay, this is what you're gonna eat, and that's that is gone. So having this connection with where the ingredients come from, I try to bring that into our whole environment in terms of Stella, all that rest of the chefs, I want them to feel equally as passionate about the sourcing, about the producers, because I know that that just always elevates the flavors that we want to produce to another level. As the sun goes down and the lights come on, you want to give people an experience. There was one that actually made someone cry once. That was the first time I've ever experienced that here. I would drop music from Africa and uh, you know, I play stuff from Latin America. I play a bit of hip hop and like I'll move in and out to kind of fit the, the space here. Yeah? I'm, I'm so lucky to have a view like that. From the time I started work here, this is the one thing that always I always marvel at. I never get tired of this view. The club sound beyond 10 p.m. is always a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more digestible for uh, the people who come up here. Because you not only have tourists, you have hotel guests, and you do have people who want to club. I think there's something for everyone. <laughs> good comments from from the crowd everyone's like oh you know it's really cool to hear music from my country and you know like say lovey being quite an international uh, destination hi i'm valentina and i moved here in singapore three months ago i've heard about this italian restaurant so let's see if this italian restaurant can have my food craving the handmade the squid ink uh, takalurini and then you have the fin the clay oysters kaluga queen caviar hokkaido sea urchin and sardinia potaga this is the first time that i have homemade pasta in singapore and it's amazing it really reminds me the pasta that my mom cooked for me so good this meat is so tender and juicy and it's very well cooked I enjoyed my time here having good drinks, listening to a jazz band in this beautiful location. And I can definitely say that this is the best Italian restaurant I've ever tried here in Singapore. But it's one of those things where you, you never actually make the decision to start it. And that was probably the most important part of this whole process was actually just committing to the fact that I was going to spend years. I, I didn't know it was going to be three years, but I knew it was going to be a long time. And I went through periods of confidence and, and, and near depression on this ship. If you look at something for so long and you spend so much time working on it, you lose all confidence that it's going to be of interest to anybody, anybody else. So that's why I guess I was so excited when the film was released and, and people sort of appreciated the work that had gone into it. So it started to feel a bit more worthwhile again. And that it wasn't so much that I wanted to show off or show people the city, the city growing. I think I actually wanted to see it myself. Singapore's got nowhere to, nowhere, nowhere to grow. It's not like a lot of places in the world where cities sprawl and get bigger. In Singapore, things tend to get taken down before they get built up. It has to be creative in how it plans for development. And so for me, that's, that's a story. It's like, it's like the modernization of Singapore and just seeing it almost reinvent itself every, every few years. The way that I wanted to shoot it, I didn't just want to have permanent cameras which would create a, a very common time-lapse effect where you see a cloud that appears and a cloud that disappears. I wanted the whole film to flow organically.
So I had to do a lot of planning and started with about 30 core shots. By the end of the film, it grew to about 70 locations around the city. And then it took a lot of, a lot of discipline. And it can be a little bit of a lonely existence when you spend three, three and a half years working on a project. I don't think, for example, even my wife and my daughter really know how much went into this film. But I really do enjoy, enjoy being like an outside observer. Uh, and even though the techniques have changed throughout all of my films, there's still a sense that it's almost like you're in a separate place when you're looking at the, at, at the city. Um, so I'm not really getting in people's faces with cameras. I'm more just somebody who's sort of quietly off to the side looking at the world from a, from a distance. Whoever said money can't buy happiness has never been to IMM. Let's go! This is Singapore's largest outlet mall with over 90 outlet stores. And the best thing is, they all offer up to 80% discounts on international brands all year round. And to get here is easy. Just take the short walk from Jurong East MRT Station via the Jaywalk Link Bridge. Food, glorious food. If you can name it, you can eat it right here at IMM. I think I'll start with some Asian fusion. Just look at this. Bali Thai's famous seafood pad thai noodles. I'm finally ready to hunt for a whole new wardrobe. But where better place to start than a woman's most important accessory, the handbag. Pay attention, gents. Check out Coach for an unparalleled collection of quality and craftsmanship at irresistible discounts. Visit Furla, where you'll find the perfect bag for any occasion. This chic design was especially created for this store. Head over to Kate Spade, New York for something playfully sophisticated. I probably have enough already, but I cannot miss Outlet by Club 21. This outlet features a well-curated collection of both men's and women's apparel. Ooh, I found the perfect dress. Sakor is one of my favorite lifestyle brands that caters for men, women, and kids. And the best part, you can get up to 75% discount any time of the year. From heels to flats and wedges to sneakers, Charles and Keith has the perfect fit for you at discounted prices. A lady can never have too many shoes. Shopping is a very physical activity. Luckily, there's an abundance of athleisure wear at IMM too. At Under Armour, you can kit yourself from head to toe while saving up to 50% off recommended retail prices. If you're a visiting tourist, be sure to pick up the IMM Tourist Privilege Booklet at the customer service counter on level one to enjoy exclusive offers. And if all that isn't enough to satisfy your shopping appetite, you could always head over to Westgate or J-Cube Malls, which are just a short walk away from IMM. IMM, Westgate and J-Cube are the ultimate mega mall experiences in Singapore. It's been a fantastic day of retail therapy and exercise. I've got all this to take home and I've saved more than I've paid. Better get a cab. Visit IMM, Singapore's largest outlet mall today, and experience shopping like never before. Welcome to Level 33, the world's highest urban microbrewery. Where all beers are brewed on site. Where brewing is in our DNA, which inspires our menu. And where people feel like home, even though they're away from home. Craftsmanship is for me the expression of the passion and creativity of a person that is not mass market and creates something really unique. We have obviously the microbrewery as the anchor and key element of craftsmanship that goes throughout the venue. Craftsmanship means that you need to do more things by yourself. So the human touch is central. Of course, you put your creativity and your ideas inside. You can manipulate to have a different output if you want to. Our beers are usually very traditional, but we have also unique seasonal beers like our brewed beer, which is brewed with the same yeast as Champagne Baron de Rothschild, which is our house champagne. So 
after eight very successful years here at Level 33, we wanted to address our customer needs by creating a more formal environment in the dining room and a social, more vibrant, cozy environment here in the social area and a beautiful raw and seafood oyster bar behind me with best view of the bay. I think first of all, F33 being the world highest urban microbrewery, this is our uniqueness, this is our heart. So when we think about food, it's okay, what can we deliver here? Taking advantage of the brewery. So we start to think of okay, the beer we can use, but also the byproduct, which is spent grains. We are now offering a content brewery cuisine where yeast meets west. So it's a modern food focus, but also brewery inspired cuisine. So I guess that's what really makes us unique because we are a restaurant in a brewery and we are making use of that as well. Cooking from Chef Archan, then we have Gabriel's beer and Martin's vision. I think somehow between we are the bridge connecting points of all these elements towards the guests, especially with the new cuisine that we have contemporary to transform somehow with food and beer, we always try to blend it together and showcase this to the guests. I recommend Level 33 to my family and friends because it's a unique experience from the food beverage offer. You have the obviously homemade beers. We have a beautiful wine selection with boutique wines from all over the world. And the dining options range from the formal dining for corporate lunches or dinners to here to the social area or on the terrace with beautiful drinks, finger food and everything paired with a unique, magnificent bay view.